Well, they've blasted it on billboards, and the director of the FBI even came to town to hammer home the message, convicted felons caught with guns are looking at hard time. In a KRQE investigation, Ann Perrette checks to see if law enforcement is delivering on that promise. These are the types of women they use in Uvalde. They use in Illinois. Name the place. AKs, ARs, ghost guns with scopes and silencers. These are weapons of war, right? And the individuals that are possessing these should obviously never should have had them to begin with. But their intent behind this is to cause serious damage to individuals and property. The FBI's special agent in charge, Rongu Buhanda, took these firearms out of evidence to show us what the Violent Crimes Task Force has caught convicted felons with in the last couple of months. Most of these are we're targeting, we're working together to try to find these individuals, and some of these others are folks that we stumble onto. We will use anything in that big code book um, to go after those who are killing people and shooting at people in our community. That felon in possession is, a, is, is our most useful tool, frequently. The U.S. attorney can issue the charge as long as the suspect has a felony record and police caught them with a gun on them or in their home or car. Caleb Elich had an active arrest warrant and six convictions on his record when this happened. I turned one thing, Tommy's attempting to flee, ran my car. Police say he was behind the wheel of that car and sped off after hitting Officer Jeremy Vaughn's patrol car when the state police officer tried to talk to him. This seven mile chase leads to a crash and a shootout. Shots fired, I'm down. The Bernalillo County DA's office initially charged Elledge with six felonies, but the state paused the case in August so the feds could take over or adopt it. This adoption program and this relationship has really expanded the number of cases um, in this office that were traditionally state cases. We can't take over, nor should we, for the district attorney. But U.S. Attorney Alexander Ubias says the office is willing to throw the weight of a federal prison sentence at a repeat offender. Up to 15 years, more than twice as much time as the state law carries, there's no parole, and the sentence is served outside of New Mexico. A felon in possession is a fairly easy charge to prove versus most victim crimes that involve a lot of eyewitness testimony and memory, and if there's problems with securing a victim, with there's problems with evidence on the broader case, whatever it looks like on the state side, uh, our case is much cleaner often when we charge 922. So who decides if the feds are adopting the case? I'm told there's a discussion every day between prosecutors in the Bernalillo County DA's office and assistant U.S. attorneys. They're reviewing every single state felony complaint to make that determination. So they have good handles on, on what's the, both the law in the state, so what, what the charges are, what the penalties are, as well as the likelihood of conviction, the likelihood of sentence, what a realistic plea or sentence would look like in the state case. And of course, they compare it to what they know here at the federal system. We asked for the total number of adopted Bernalillo County cases. The U.S. Attorney's Office says it counted at least 31 in 2022. They couldn't tell us how many they declined to take on, though. But as was the case with Jacqueline Williams, the felon doesn't even need to be accused of committing a violent crime. Drop the bags. Just do what we say, all right? Albuquerque police caught up to Williams outside the Cottonwood Mall after they believe she shoplifted from two stores. Turn around and face the mirror. There you go. All right, keep your hands up your head. Albuquerque police, stop! Stop! You won't be shot! Team bag, team bag! Stop, get down! Get down! Police say just seconds before getting Williams into custody, she threw a handgun down an aisle. Oh, found it. Found it? Yep, got the firearm. While holding the scene, this responding officer is approached by an upset store employee who tells them this is why her daughter wants her to move. I said it's a safer bet at this point. I'm not going to lie to you. Albuquerque is insanely yeah. dangerous and it's getting worse. There's no consoling her. He blames career criminals like Williams. Yeah, unfortunately. No matter how many times we lock bad people up, they keep getting out and they keep coming back. So I asked, will putting Williams and other convicted felons caught with guns into the federal system help curb the city's violence? There's 
some data out there that's kind of showing that trend, but I think it's one of those that I'll sit down with all the chiefs and sheriffs and, and all the federal partners as well and decide, is it working? And if it's working, we'll obviously continue it. Or maybe we'll make some adjustments and changes along the way to make sure that we're having the biggest impact. The U.S. attorney says violence intervention is also needed. So working with the city of Albuquerque, his office is restarting the Project Safe Neighborhood Program. It involves connecting with victims of violence to keep them safe and make sure they don't retaliate. Ann Perrette, KRQE investigates. It can be a double whammy for felons caught with guns. They can still face state charges for the crimes they're accused of committing while they had that gun.